Yeah, thank you very much, Luke, and thank you everyone for um, joining in and to listen to our story on the water control room for the Goulburn Broken Catchment Management Agency. It's been a great project that we've been working on through most of this year and um, was made live at the end of end of October and during November. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about where the Goulburn Broken Catchment Management Authority is. Um, what the environmental management responsibilities are, and then I'll kick over and talk about the water control and functionality that has been set up for them. And as Luke said, we can then end up with questions and answers. I hope by that I'm clear for everybody now. I see there's a question about not hearing properly with a bit of distortion. I think that was coming from Luke's side. Okay, so the Golden Broken CMA is, is one of several CMAs in Victoria. You can see a map there of Melbourne in the south all the way up to the northern boundary with New South Wales and the Murray River. So the catchment area itself is actually extending all the way from the Great Dividing Range in the south through to the Golden Murray River in the north, a very large area with diverse catchments and therefore equally diverse management requirements. So from very high pristine natural catchments in the south through to very flat groundwater dominant catchments in the north with the end point being the Murray River. If you just look at it in a little bit more detail, you can see the mountainous great dividing range in the south with Mount Buller there for example. Lake Eildon is the major reservoir there controlling the Goulburn River itself. The other major rivers are the Broken River and the Broken Creek, both of which flow separately into, into the Murray River at the bottom. So, the Goulburn Broken CMA has a number of water management activities that they are responsible for. The particular group that we have been working with is the Environmental Monitoring and Management Group. So their activities center around river rind water quality and related environmental management aspects. So some of the things they do is, for example, determining and then ordering environmental water on behalf of the environmental water holder, state environmental water holder. They do a lot of monitoring of the catchments, especially those with environmental value, um, including unregulated catchments. And they have to collaborate with partners such as Golden Murray Water, for example, that manage the dams and the releases from those reservoirs and barrages and stakeholders. They have to make a lot of decision decisions on this so a typical activity would be defining at different times of year the amount of water that needs to reach a certain location for let's say fish passage and fish migration or other type environmental requirements so they have to make those management decisions and for that they need to know what the system status is um, they then make actions on those decisions and levels that have been defined and implement those actions and obviously once those are implemented they have to then monitor the response of that so a typical example would be a release from Eildon Dam for an environmental order that they have required further downstream at Rice's Weir where the river meets the, Mal the Murray and they then need to monitor exactly how that order is going down the system and whether it is actually meeting what they thought it would do and therefore adjusting based on how it is reacting. So it all needs information. That's the start of all of the management activities. And as a result, Goulburn Murray is a member of the Water Monitoring Partnership in Victoria and do a lot of monitoring of water quality and other river flow and related parameters at various sites and provide that to the Water Monitoring Partnership. And they also therefore have to report to their stakeholders and to the Department of Environment, Land and Water and Planning, for example, on the status of the system and their activities. So, as with everything, there are a lot of challenges in water management. One of them is always around this information and data. So the challenges that Goblin Broken were faced with is that a lot of this information is already there and available, but it's not readily available in real time and in a suitable format for them. And you have to have this information in real time in suitable formats for you to be able to make effective decisions and implementation and monitor your situation. This data is available is available at many locations. So the Golden Murray would be Golden Murray Water would be one of those locations. The Bureau of Meteorology is another one. Um, 
But because it's at many locations, the GBCMA staff have to go into many different portals, log into those portals and get the information from those various disparate portals and then combine it together to be able to get the information they need for the decision making. They also had no control over what was shown in those various portals because they were designed for those organizations and not for the GBCMA. Um, and as such, the data that was available, they did not meet their needs and they had to do further manipulation and use of it to get this information. And this caused obviously delays in time and cost burdens on the staff to get the information they needed, which they were seeking to reduce. Another issue with getting data from other sources is always the data administrators themselves are always concerned about providing access to people outside because of possible corruptions and security. Um, that's always an issue for them and had to be overcome as well. Traditional solutions to this then generally cause a central database to be created on your own servers and then you link all of the data sources to that database and then access it from there. And this is very expensive to implement and for many organizations prohibitively expensive to implement and therefore you sit in this perpetual crash 22 of having to get access from these various locations never to your own particular needs. Unhappy smiley face. So enter um, Hydronet water control room. The Golden Broken then approached us to implement this water control room. And the main goal of this water control room is to obviously um, alleviate all of those challenges that I've just mentioned. Admission being easy access to personalized dashboards and reports to make the informed decisions. Now I'm going to go through a little bit about what Hydronet is and mostly about the actual water control room that was set up for the Golden Broken CMA. A step by step process. Okay. So one thing that Hydrant is, is a, is a typical cloud-based cloud software as a service solution platform. So being a cloud-based solution, you, you actually access it over the internet, through the web, with logins. So you can access it anywhere, anytime, and you get the typical benefits of a cloud-based solution, which is there's no further hardware or software or IT costs that you as an organization have to put in place to be able to use it. The maintenance and support costs are thereby reduced. Um, subscription costs are shared amongst all users of, of such a platform, such as Hydronet, and there's 3,000 something users at the moment in 12 countries around the world that are using Hydronet. As a cloud-based solution, your software updates are obviously also automatically updated all the time and you stay up to date and relevant into the future. Um, an ICT authority in America expecting that in the near future, probably 80% of all professional software services will be running through the cloud. These would be things like Office 365 and Spotify would be very good examples. But that's not all that Hydronet is. Hydronet is a, not just a service in the cloud, but it's a water control room platform. And it implements what we call the digital delta approach. A digital delta approach is basically an approach where you create secure connections that smartly link to various databases systems and products that are out there on the internet so it is linking you to that data it's not copying that data to a centralized database it's creating secure smart links and on top of that smart tools that then enable you to use that linked data visualize it and use it in your own personalized way with personalized dashboards in this way the responsibility for the data is remaining at the source so the source organization that maintains that data, they maintain responsibility, and you don't get any unnecessary duplication of that information. Um, you're only linking to it and viewing it, and downloading the bits that you need at the time that you need. You're not copying huge amounts of data. But there's a lot of time and cost saving in just not having to do that copying of information across the internet. And all this is meant to help multiple organizations also link together and work together. So when there's a collaborative decision-making environment that is needed, this is a very good way of easily linking everybody together to make those collaborative decisions. So, the process we went through for Bulb and Broken and we go through with anyone is to initially connect to the data and I'll explain how that happens, then allowing viewing of that data to combine the various data sets and analyze them, then setting thresholds and watching the information in real time through your dashboards, then also a possibility is to set alerts systems on that. Um, this wasn't done for the Golden Broken CMA, but it is certainly something that is capable in the system. 
and also allowing um, automated report generations. Now we'll go through each of these steps one by one, starting off with connecting to the databases. So Hydronet, at the bottom here, you can see various different distributed data sources that Hydronet connects to. In this particular case, what's relevant here is the Bureau of Meteorology and their data, as well as the Aquarius database of the Goulburn Murray Water. Aquarius database is the main database that is housing all of the water quality and river flow information for the Goulburn Broken Area as part of the Water Monitoring Partnership. So the Hydronet backend services create these live links and they are secure links, which I will explain in the next slide. Um, these two are not that relevant, but basically once those connections are made to the data application services at the front end through your internet allow you to then view that data in the way you need. There are a number of applications in, in Hydronet, but the one that is relevant for today is the water control room. And we implement a web service on those databases that then controls the access to that database. So here you can see, just if I start at the bottom, an organization that has various databases, in this case, the Aquarius database. Hydronet puts a data web service on there that manages the authorization and the authentication. So only those that have, are authorized to access that and only the data that they are authorized to access is enabled here. Through the DMZ of the client, a proxy is controlling the access through the DMZ and only requests from the Hydronet IP address are allowed through the firewall via HTTPS or VPN into Hydronet and then to the client. This is state-of-the-art security um, worldwide and it's how all cloud systems are basically working. Just to say the, the, the main security breaches that, that organizations have these days are no longer these cloud-based access systems as you see here. They're normally internal jobs or someone putting a flash disk into your computer and getting passwords from people by going inside and that. Unless you do that, you basically cannot get access to these systems. So they're pretty secure. So this particular project, the data that we've made available is the precipitation, various water quality parameters, water level and flow rate. Um, you can see two graphs on the, on the side there just as a demonstration of what data is available, um, plus Bureau of Meteorology data. So there's various Bureau of Meteorology data also available now to the GBCMA in their dashboards including the historical six million interval radar images, meteograms, forecasts and warnings, observed river and rainfall flows for the entire country. So, step one, connections are made, live links are set up, and obviously these have benefits. This digital data provides the benefits of this live real-time secure link, the data from various locations, without duplication, so you don't have versioning issues and there's no added storage and related cost to that. So it's very cost effective compared to setting up a large central data repository to copy everything to. The DBCMA staff are now always seeing the official data, so the data that's provided by the database administrators is the data that they are seeing, not a copy thereof. That responsibility remains at source and the concerns of the database administrators are met because Hydronet is actually acting as a protective layer above that database, controlling access in and out, not swamping their database and ensuring that only those that have access and only that information they're asking for at a particular time is, is sent out. They have no added burden now. Once the links are set up, the database administrator it does not have to be bothered with providing that information all the time to people that are asking it. They just log into their dashboards and it's there without further added burden. And it's, in the future, easy to expand and link to other databases as needed. So step two, smiley face, is viewing the data. So you log into Hydronet, and it brings you to an application that allows you to view the data that you have connected to in the previous step. I'm gonna show a little video clip just to, um, that demonstrates how you would um, add a new data parameter and then bring it into a charting format and to merge a couple of different monitoring sites together to create a combined graph that could then be set up for somebody's dashboard. 
before I do that, just to explain the interface here, you set the period that you're interested in and all the various data sets that you want are showing here. If you want to add a new layer or new information, you click on add new layer button and the list of everything that is accessed comes up and you just click the data set you want and the graph will, will appear. So I'm now going to just explain as I play this video. So I've set my time, I'm clicking on add a new layer. I'm going to surface water in this case, surface water quantity, because I want to get the daily flow, flow operational data set. That's for all locations. And then you'll see it loads and those black dots have turned to red. Now that new data set is loaded. I've clicked it on the Murchison location and I've downloaded the chart for that particular time period I've set and brought it into my workspace. I've already previously put in for Shepparton and higher up at Seymour, the flows, and I'll just drag and drop the three together to make a combined chart. Now I basically, for example, have this combined chart of all of the information for the last two weeks, in this case, for the main stem of the Golden River, and that is a chart that I want staff to be able to see. I then click place on dashboard and I move on to the next step. So that is one way of just adding data easily from the link that's been created and setting up a graph that you want. So the benefits of all of this now that Goldman Broken have is that they can access this data easily through that mechanism I've just demonstrated anyway, anytime. Um, they, have to, they can stop searching for the data. It's all there at their fingertips in their control room. And they can smartly combine it through drag and drop, for example, this data and make graphs and maps using these smart tools without any further IT hassle. Happiness. The next step is creating alerts and watching your data, for example. So here I'm zoomed out to the entire Golden Broken area. You're seeing polygons of the major sub sub management areas that they that they manage and also a thick line for the main stem of the rivers, the Golden River and the Broken Creek and Broken River, as well as some of the major locations there. And they've all got a color. You can see on the left-hand side under the legend is, is what each of those colors represent. If you were to click on one of those locations, you would basically get a list of all of the data sets that are there, and you can click on the data set you want, and it'll show you a chart. The colors of the polygons, in this case, have been driven by the median or the average of all of the tributary flow. So if I'm looking here at the middle Goulburn area, all of these locations on the various tributaries are averaged together to show the status for all of the tributaries. Whereas the main stem is showing blue in this case, and it's the status of all of the monitoring locations along the main stem. And it's quite easy to see here, for example, at a glance, that the main stem is flowing a lot stronger than the tributaries are. And that would be because of releases out of Yildon Dam here, for example. You can also see that it's higher further up in the catchment and getting lower further down. So obviously the flow is dropping as it goes down, which is to be expected. You can also see that there's a lot more runoff in the tributaries up in the mountainous areas where it's raining a lot more as to be expected. And as you go downstream to the bottom here, it's hardly flowing at all. A nice snapshot of what it looks like. You want to um, set this up, you basically click on the theme you want, you click on edit, like that, and that brings you up an interface. At this interface, you can either set up a, a, a theme or a legend that is the same for every single location, or you can actually change it per time and per location. So you may want to have a different set of thresholds for different locations, and those thresholds you may want to have different for different times of year. That can all be set up. In this case, I've made it even for all locations. You can then set up the time spans you want to see on, 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 on this map in the background. So I've set up for 14 days. So what that's showing is that the colors that you are seeing are based on 14 days. So although I'm showing the observed latest data, in this case, and that is generating the color, you could set it up to show the maximum of the last 14 days or the minimum or the sum. So normally for rainfall, you would want to throw something like that, the sum of the last months of data. In this case, you would set 30 days and you could then choose the color of the rainfall to be based on the sum of the last 30 days. Um, the chart chart is when you click on that location, it brings up a chart for how many days you want. In this case, 365 days. The chart will be a year of data, 
and this information on your dashboard will be refreshed every 15 minutes. The next step you do is to choose which locations you want to see. I've basically selected all the locations for all the gold and broken CMA in this particular case. And the final step is then to define your thresholds. And when you define the threshold, you can show last available as I'm showing, or you can show any of these statistics that you see here. And if you choose one of those statistics, it then uses that, in this case, 14 day period to generate the statistics for the last 14 days. So this is all something that you are interacting with the data and setting up once off. Once you set it up, you basically copy it to your dashboard and it just gets updated and refreshed into the future. So you're a lot more in control with the information that's been housed elsewhere. You can now keep an eye in real time on the winner system visually by setting these intelligent thresholds and setting alerts based on those if you would like. Happiness once again. I'm now going to go into the dashboarding functionality. Normally what would happen in an organization is, 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 is the main user of Hydronet would, would be setting up these graphs for users that are, are not technically orientated and they just want a dashboard. They would explain, I want to see this information. They would go through this process that I have just gone through and um, to set up the maps and to set up the charts and create a dashboard. So this is an example of a dashboard that has been created for Golden Murray, for Golden Broken CMA. It's the lower Goulburn in this case, so one of the sub-management areas, and it's pretty much the same. Polygon is showing the average status of all the tributaries, and the line is showing the average status of the main stem. Further down, you can see graphs of, in this case, the lower Goulburn River flows, and the tributary flows as two separate graphs. If you scroll further down on, on the dashboard, you'll see further charts for the lower Goulburn, the Sevens Creek, some precipitation, temperature and dissolved oxygen charts. So these are one page of the various dashboards. When you're in your dashboard, you can interact with it. Let's say this chart, I'm gonna zoom into this um, event that happened at the beginning of December. I zoom in and I can now see that um, the flow rates around the 4th of December peaked to about 15,000 megaliters per day. And this was based after that rainfall event that everyone was panicking about around Melbourne and that didn't actually turn out to be as bad as was predicted. This was a very good event for Goulburn Broken to use the system and they were logging into it every single day to keep an eye on, on the flows and the rainfall um, and black water events afterwards for the days afterwards, whether there were going to be any black water events that came up because of these half flows. You can also, um, while you're looking, you can switch on and off different locations. So yeah, I'm just clicking back and forward to show certain locations because it can be quite cluttered if they're all on there. So it's easy enough to just take off the ones you want. You don't want and to just view the ones you want. Once you've done that, you can then download this information in any format, CSV, PDF, JPEG, PNG, for example, and it downloads. I'll scroll back up to the top. I can then in the map as well interact with that. I click on one of those locations and everything that is sitting at that location, precipitation level flow, and if I zoom further down, others come up. I click on the one that I want, which in this case was the flow, and I can see the flow for the last 365 days. And that was as I set it up in that previous step. I want to see a chart of 365 days. And in this chart, then I can also zoom in and interact with and download. It's just a final example for our purposes. In this case, the lower Goulburn, very similar dashboard arrangement. So anyone who logs in, basically, they come up with this dashboard page. They can see the different dashboards for the different management areas. And if they just click on those different dashboards, they will go into those different management areas and see the information, current observed and historical that they need for that area without bothering anyone. Just going to show a video now of how it works. So this is the lower Goulburn. Click on the theme to see the legend. And if I scroll down on that theme, I can see all of the different data sets and parameters that are, have been set up. So it's dissolved oxygen, it's temperature, it's conductivity, it's water level, it's water flow, it's precipitation. They are all there. If I click on a particular location, there are the various parameters. I've clicked on flow in this case. And as I did before, 
you can see uh, 15 and a half thousand megalitres today peaking on the 4th of December. I wanted to zoom in a little bit more. That looks nice. I can now download it as a CSV and it downloads it immediately and I can open it in Excel and play with it further if I would like to. Just zooming now, scrolling down the page to be able to see some of the other information as previously shown. There was about 24 millimeters of rain in Seymour during that event, a lot less than what was predicted, although in the mountainous areas. Yeah, you can see at Uroya, it was about 11,000 something. Um, I'm happy with the graph and I download it for use in a report, for example. I then click on Broken Creek. I want to see what Broken Creek looks like. We have a slightly different dashboard here, similar map, but you can see the charts at the bottom there. The Rice is where environmental flow compliance is a particularly important website, and they have different flow environmental flow requirements at different times of year. So whether it's for fish passage or fish migration at certain times of year, the flow needs to be either higher or it doesn't need to be higher. So you can actually see in this chart here that the threshold of concern changes throughout the year. So from September, it jumps up to a much higher flow that needs to be maintained. And in this case, you can see the flow has not been doing that well after the event. On the right-hand side, rice is where dissolved oxygen is also quite important. You can see the various thresholds of what is needed to be met versus the actual observed dissolved oxygen. Always interesting to see how the dissolved oxygen changes day and night to the temperature, I believe. So that was a very quick overview um, of the dashboarding functionality as well um, that has been set up for the Gold and Broken CMA, giving them very much their own access to the data so that they can set up the information they need that's useful for themselves. They are much more in control now um, and don't have to hassle anybody to get that information. They can use it inside the organization. They don't need to have any technical know how to do this. All staff can view what they want. And if they know even nothing, they can just ask one of the other staff to set it up a dashboard for them and they just log in all the time. They can keep an eye on their system now in real time. It updates every 15 minutes. And this um, event that I was explaining in December, the first weekend of December, it was a very good example of how it has proven very useful to monitor exactly what happened during that event and afterwards. They have personalized dashboards set up for field staff, office staff, and management, all different because they have different needs, allowing them to make much more accountable decisions. Another smiley face. The alerting functionality wasn't set up, but it may be set up in the future and can be set up. The alerting functionality is pretty standard. You can basically take a status of a particular system. So if the dissolved oxygen changes from yellow to red alert, you can then set up certain actions such as sending SMSs or emails to groups or people and also starting certain processes like run a certain model, for example. The final functionality that is now possible for Golden Broken is automatic report generating. So if you go back into the dashboard, you can then click on this little button here, which is create an embed. If I click on that button, I come up with a little window that enables me to create a static or a dynamic web embed. The dynamic embed is basically taking that chart, and which is a 30-day chart, and updating it to the last 30 days. So every time it's opened, it's showing the latest 30 days. And the lifetime is basically if 1,440 minutes is one day. So this will um, update and refresh every single day. Once you've set it up, you can basically create a link by choosing click here, and then you can put that link into any website or any Word document or PowerPoint slideshow or PDF document that you may wish to have. And then every time you open those documents, you basically get the latest information. So it's very useful for setting up reports to your stakeholders or to management on the status of the river, where you basically set up your template and you create all the charts that you need to basically report on every month and you put them in those embeds into your report and every time you open it, they're all updated with the latest information. You don't have to do anything any further. But click here, get an example of that particular chart and the embed and how it would look in my report. This is the um, Shepparton Irrigation Region Salinity Groundwater Portal. 
uh, it's a good example of that embed functionality. So the map that you see here is an embed that's sitting on that website. This embed is interactive. If you click on a particular location, you can then see the actual groundwater depth against the alert level for, for salinity risk. So if the groundwater goes above that red line, they have a salinity risk area. It also has another embed showing a map view of the salinity risk. You can select different years and the salinity risk that was faced during those years, and I believe 2011 was a particularly bad year down in that part of the world where there was quite a high salinity risk due to high groundwater levels. So that is the automatic reporting functionality, which gives them a lot of time saving because the reports are generated automatically with one click after they've been set up in Word, PDF, or PowerPoint. This increases awareness, allowing them to share the information with stakeholders a lot easier in various ways, through web embeds, through these reports, and also, interestingly, through linkages to ESRI's ARC Online. There's quite a lot of organizations in the world that actually use ARC Online to make information available outside of the organization to the public. Um, and if you have that, you can basically generate information on that storyboard using Hydronet as well, and the Hydro Report functionality. Happy days. So in summary, the whole idea here is that for the Golden Broken CMA, they now have the ability to deal with this particular situation here, where you have stakeholders, funders, consultants, board members, many different people asking all sorts of different information, and you don't have that information in the formats that you need and that they need, um, and it just takes too much time and effort, and a lot of time and effort is wasted on doing this. So with the dashboarding set up, and the water control room set up, all of those different people get their personalized reports and dashboards that they need, and you don't have to worry anymore, and the data providers don't have to worry anymore. And everyone is happy. So, we're basically coming to the end of it. Um, I hope you learned, I hope it wasn't too quick. I hope you heard a lot about the water control room and its functionalities and have a good idea of its functionality. You're welcome to, to contact me as well for more questions of clarity. And um, my contact details are on the bottom, bottom there. I did mention before that there are other functionalities as well that we're working on, um, also for the Golden Broken, in developing a flood reporting webinar, a flood reporting portal that allows um, the public to search for their property and actually generate a report on the fly of the flood information linked to that property. Um, we're going to be doing a webinar on that on the 25th of January, same time. And um, if you want to register for that, you can go to our website and look, click on news webinars and register for that webinar. That's also a very exciting functionality that is pretty much ready to go. Um, thank you for listening. I'm going to hand over to Luke for some questions. Um, he's been keeping check of all of the questions that have been coming in and we're going to have a bit of time. To Thank you, Brian. We have, we have received a couple of questions and um, if anybody else has additional questions and would like to just post them in the, in the chat space uh, now, that would be great. Uh, first question we've got uh, from Terry is, do, do contributing data organisations have to publish their data via a web service or are there other protocols possible? Yes, um, they don't have to publish it via web service. So um, you don't have to have your own web service. The ideal situation, obviously, is, is, is databases that are web enabled with web services and APIs for the IT people um, that allow this authentication and, and, and authorization abilities to happen. But if you do not have such a web service, it is still possible to connect to any database um, normally, we would then do that via an FTP site. So the data, or even an Excel spreadsheet, can be copied to an FTP site, and that Excel spreadsheet can be linked to, and may be made of you available in your dashboard. Or a database would just copy the information to an FTP site, and it will be obtained from that FTP site. So there are different ways of um, accessing from new data databases, um, even if they don't have DWSs. Hydronet can also set up its own um, web service at an organization um, to play that role. So um, generally, 
any database or modern database can be connected to, and most of them that are out there are already set up to work with Hydronet. So Hydronet works with all databases. Um, maybe another thing to add on that is it's a two-way thing. So often information comes into the dashboard, but it also needs to be used externally in a model, for example, hydraulic or hydrology models for other purposes like flooding. And the data in Hydronet can basically be reformatted on the fly and exported to a location where that model can then pick it up and run and run with it in real time. So it's a very nice way of operationalizing the information flow between the data providers and the modelers who need that information elsewhere, as well as the decision makers. So yeah, long story short, web services are ideal, but doesn't have to have one. Great, thanks Brian. That also um, feeds into another question that we had was, which was about um, what data types could be used. Um, which you've covered off as you didn't miss any, did you? Or? Well, um, people are welcome to ask specific questions about data types. I don't remember in my own mind all of the data types that are available and they can be linked to. Um, but major databases are things like Hystra, Aquarius, Infoworks, um, Tuflow, DHIS databases. There are all examples, Aquarius, of course, that we're linking to, can be linked to. And um, you spoke through the presentation and there's also been a question about uh, accessing the data. So uh, obviously it comes through as um, some visual components, but um, downloading the data, are there, is there any limitations in that uh, to be accessing the data that's um, shown and available? No, so any data you can see in your dashboard for any particular period of time you can download. Obviously, if you're gonna download five years of data at a time, it's gonna take you a bit longer than if you're just downloading a month or a week of data, but there is no, 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 no limitation in that. So if you have a historical data set and it's linked to, and you wanna download that, you're welcome to. You probably have to have a few cups of coffee while you wait for it, though. Certainly. Um, now, you were, you, another question was also, you talked a little bit about the Blackwater events uh, potentially um, for the, the CMA when they were observing from a few weeks back. Um, can you expand on how the CMA was using the system in, uh, to monitor the Blackwater events and what would, what would have happened if, uh, through that process if there was actually a Blackwater event um, progressing through the system? Okay, um, we are getting into territory where I'm not an expert as well on environmental management. But what, what they basically were doing um, after the events, obviously they could in real time see the, the flow levels as they rose and which areas had um, particularly high flows and were therefore um, sort of alerted to possible black water events. Then um, with all of the dissolved oxygen information that they have on their portals, they are basically were monitoring the dissolved oxygen levels and to see if they suddenly started crashing um, in those areas that they were concentrating on for possible events. Um, it's a, if the, I don't remember, to be honest, if they had any blackwater events, but if the dissolved oxygen levels were um, suddenly changed and dropped significantly based on the trend, compared to the trend of the days up to that, then they knew that there was a blackwater event coming up. And then they could use their um, environmental, for example, allocations they have to make a decision on possibly changing releases or, or other activities that I'm not an expert on exactly how they would manage a Blackwater event. I think one thing would be communication to people about it, to be aware, um, to make releases from a, another source that has some dissolved oxygen, in, let's say uh, one of the weirs, and, 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 and maybe flooded a bit with some dissolved oxygen from a different source or whatever decisions they make, up to them. But the main thing is they were monitoring the dissolved oxygen and the flows. And it was easy for them to do that in real time now without having to get it from different data sources and take a lot of time to actually put it together in reports. So it helped them ease that burden of monitoring. Thank you. I th there's, there's a question I see here about setup and how easy or difficult it is I wanted to answer to create something like this from existing Excel spreadsheets. 
can I answer that quickly, Luke? Yeah, go for it. Um, well, this particular one we did for the Golden Broken CMA is basically was a, a six months project, um, an easy six months project to set up. It's it's very quick because this is being a, um, a software cloud based platform. It's all functionality that's already there. The biggest time is um, just creating the links to the database oneself. Once those links are created, the software is pretty much working. The other the other time the thing that we do is we have um, workshops with the organization where we brainstorm the information they need and the various dashboards they would like set up. So that's what we did with Golden Broken. Those dashboards that you saw were based on two different workshops that we had brainstorming exactly what was needed and how it should look and what graphs and maps were wanted. And then those were, were, were basically set up. Um, they can be set up by the organization themselves or, or they could ask ourselves to set it up for them if they wanted to. It's different ways to do it. The functionality is all already inbuilt. Um, if you're using existing Excel spreadsheets, we, we do do that in a number of cases in, in my previous life in South Africa where water quality samples are actually just stored on a spreadsheet and that spreadsheet is just copied to an FTP site and then the links are created to that. So it's as easy to do it from an Excel spreadsheet as it is from any database. The only difference being because it's an FTP site, it's not a real-time link. It's updated where every time the spreadsheet is updated, of course. And if the spreadsheet is updated, not updated all the time, then obviously the dashboard is not going to be updated all the time.